Hello and welcome to the Keeper of the Home podcast. Whether you are joining me through the video podcast on my Tidbits and Company YouTube channel or just through audio on your favorite podcast platform, thank you so much for being here with me today. Now it is Christmas time and we've got Christmas on our mind and this can be a very wonderful time of year, but it can also be sort of a stressful one for homemakers. And I have been on a fairly drastic journey in the last few years to try to revamp how I feel about Christmas and how my family approaches this time of year. So I just want to come here today and chat with you about a few things that we've done or that we are doing to try to cut back at Christmas time. And this can be through gifting. Um, cutting back on traditions or cutting back on expectations that you have or that others might have of you during this busy season. Now, this has all been an effort for me to try to help myself and my family focus more on really what we feel is the true meaning of Christmas, and that is to just celebrate the birth of our Savior Jesus Christ and the wonderful life that he lived and what he did for us. So I have really wanted to refocus our hearts and it's taken some intentional thought and actions <laughs> to help us get closer to where I really want Christmas to be for us as a family. But these efforts have been well worth it and I'm already beginning to see the fruits of our labors. So as I chat with you today, I really hope to just encourage you if you are feeling um, maybe a tug in your heart to also find ways to cut back at Christmas time and find a whole new level of pr and purpose for this holiday season. I really hope to just give you some ideas and some inspiration to help you with that, that wonderful goal. So thank you for joining me. I've got a lot of fun things to share with you and I can't wait to dig in. Now, before we dive into the meat of this podcast, there are a few housekeeping items I'd like to discuss with you. First of all, this week I am going to launch my Christmas home tour. This is something I've been doing for probably over 10 years. Actually, probably more than that at this point. I always just say 10 years, even though time goes by. But anyway, my blog has a ton of Christmas home tours and I'm excited to share this year's. It's definitely a little more simple. Um, as I tend to get more and more simple every year, but I really hope that you'll tune into my blog at tidbitsandcompany.com to see the photo tours, or I will also be launching a YouTube video Christmas home tour as well. So keep an eye out for that. Now, if you are subscribed to my email newsletter, you'll be notified right when they come out. So I encourage you to get subscribed to that if you're not already. I actually send my email subscribers a free vintage art download um, every single week. <laughs> I love finding vintage art that really resonates with me on the public domain. And so um, every week I send out a free download. And this month I'm definitely trying to find some great Christmas vintage art for us to make cards out of, uh, maybe do a craft and make an ornament out of them, or just print them and display them in your home. Whatever, whatever you would like to do with that download is up to you, but I'm really excited to um, deliver this to you every week. So check the link in the description or the show notes and find that way to subscribe to my newsletter so that I can send you those really fun freebies. Um, let's see, what else did I wanna share with you this week? Oh, so I wanted to tell you about um, my two sisters, Marcy and Megan, they are the creators of the um, Instant Pot food blog called instafreshmeals.com. And they have just released their winter cookbook. It's actually, you can get it digital, but it's actually a printed cookbook with the most incredible recipes. And what they really focus on is like freezer meals. So they give recipes in this book for making a freezer meal that you can pop into your Instant Pot or your slow cooker. And it has just been saving me this month, especially with December and all the performances and things that we get to go to. Um, what I've been doing is just making our dinner and then I double it and then freeze one of them in the freezer. So that on those busy nights, I have one that I can easily pop into the Instant Pot or the slow cooker. It's been amazing. And these are just a little bit different than other freezer meal cookbooks or websites that I've even run across. They really 
know how to make these meals just perfected every time. They're very healthy, nutritious, whole ingredients, and they give you all the instructions of how to assemble them, what order you should assemble them, how to cook it from frozen, how to cook it from fresh, um, what to do if you double it. It's just so much great information and their recipes are delicious. So I will leave you a link as well for you to check out um, this cookbook that my sisters have made at instafreshmeals.com and I'll link you to the actual cookbook. And I just wanted to share that with you and if you're on my video podcast watching me, I'm actually wearing a sweater that they made <laughs> that they're also selling in their shop. It says expect miracles on it. And it's just, it has a whole story behind it about <laughs> the work that they've done and the miracles they've seen happen in their life. So super cozy sweater and such a wonderful message. If you've got someone struggling in your life, um, how about you get them in this nice sweater that says expect miracles. I think that could be really uplifting for them. So I just wanted to give a shout out to my sisters. I love them so much and I am just cheering them on with every bit of work that they're doing and the impact that they're making in this world. Okay, I feel like every <laughs> podcast I need to add some disclaimers. I don't know why I feel like I need to do this, but there's some disclaimers or or things I just want you to be aware of that I'm thinking about as I'm making this podcast. But um, I actually really want to hear your thoughts on this topic of cutting back at Christmas time. I just love your input. You all that follow me, your comments just make my day. They teach me so much. And I just know <laughs> that there's so many of you that are going to have really great input on this topic that could help me and any others who might listen and scroll down to the comments and read your thoughts. I really wish I could reply to every single one, um, but just this season of my life doesn't always allow for that, but I read every single one. I have them come to my email and I read every single comment and they lift me up so much. So as I'm talking about the ways that we've found to cut back at Christmas time, if you think of something that you've done or even something that you struggle with and would like some input, please leave them in the comments. Now, if you're on a podcast platform like iTunes or Spotify, leaving comments is difficult, impossible. I'm not sure. You can leave reviews, but that's that's hard to like comment on a certain episode. But if you go to my Tidbits and Company YouTube channel, I host the video podcast there and it's really easy to leave um, comments on the YouTube channel. Um, episode. So please do that if you have some thoughts. I would really appreciate you taking the time to do that and teaching me and teaching others of your own wisdom and experience. Now I also want to mention we're going to be talking about gifting and <laughs> I'll probably mention like too much or too little and um, all of this is relative. This is kind of like the episode I did that like how to cope with a messy home. Messy is relative to each of us. Um, too much gifts or too little gifts, sorry, I should have said that different, <laughs> too many gifts or too little gifts at Christmas time is definitely relative. So when I talk about these things, just focus on your budget, your limits, and um, ignore what you think mine are. <laughs> I really want you to dig into like the principles of what I'm doing and not necessarily like a monetary amount or like a overarching amount that should be normalized for all society. That's definitely not a thing. So don't worry about that. Focus on your financial situation and what might be too many or too little, or even if it's not finances, just how many gifts it just feels like too many or too little. So just keep that in mind. And then um, just know, I know this is sometimes this makes me nervous when I listen to things. I'm not sure what the the podcaster is going to say, but um, we're talking about Christmas and gifting. And I understand for some of you, there might be little ears that might overhear. So I'm going to choose my words very carefully so as to not spoil any traditions. So I just wanted to let you know that. And then I just have to apologize if I'm a little inconsistent with my podcast. I try to get one out on every Monday of the week. But the month of December and this holiday season often causes me to be a little inconsistent with those goals. 
but just know it's all <laughs> in an effort for me to cut back at Christmas time so that I'm not spending so much time working when I really just want to spend time with my family and there are a lot of things to do. So thank you for just being patient with me as I maybe am a little scattered with my content for the month of December. All right, my friend, let's first address the big one gifting and buying gifts and receiving gifts this time of year. A lot of the times when we're thinking about cutting back at Christmas time, for whatever reason, um, gifting is actually the main thing we're thinking about. <laughs> at least it is for me. And it's usually the first thing that comes to my mind of something that I can do to really cut back. We as a society, and I think all over the world probably, um, have really fallen prey to the commercialism and the materialism of this time of year. It's really hard to avoid it. It just is. It's, it's everywhere. Everyone telling you to buy gifts and to do more and that you need more. Um, so we really need to be very aware of what is a very good comfortable place for us to be in the gifting arena. Now, I don't want to show up here and make you feel like gifts are inherently evil. I love gifts. <laughs> I think it's fun. I think they can be so meaningful. It can be such a wonderful thing to um, receive and to give, and it's a great way to even help teach our children or our family about the joy of giving and service. So I'm not against <laughs> gifts per se. Um, but the way I've had to look at them definitely changed like the day, or I'd say the first Christmas after I got married to my husband, Kevin. So our growing up was pretty different, <laughs> the situations in which we grew up. Um, my husband, I would, I would consider that they grew up in poverty. They did not have much. There were nine kids? Were there 10 kids? Was he the 10th? <laughs> I lose track, obviously. There were a lot of kids in his family, and um, his parents really had to scrimp and save. They, they just did the best that they could, but for him, Christmas was not a time of abundance and plenty of gifts. It was, it looked a lot different from my growing up experience. And so he has come in to our marriage with kind of a really precious perspective on the Christmas season. And um, I have had to try to make sure that I'm aware of that. And so if you're married or if you have other adults that you're living with that have come with their own um, ideas of what Christmas should look like, it's important to consider that. We've really had to sit down and talk about this because how I grew up, um, I, I guess I would say I lived in abundance and my father passed away when I was 11. So I didn't exactly have, um, you know, both parent and relationships and income. However, my dad left my mom pretty well off with all of his businesses that he grew. And so, you know, my mom was the homemaker. She, she loved to gift to us children and she still does today. And it is, not in a negative way. It is such a symbol of love for her. And I felt that all growing up. It wasn't just that she wanted to spoil us and that she just loved shopping and spending money. Gifting for her was such a language of love. And that's how it has become for me. It is one of my love languages. Because for me, it's really, really meaningful when someone thinks about what I love observes it, maybe listens to me throughout the year, and then gives me something that is like, I can just tell they've really thought about me and made that effort. So it's not even the material item, it is the thought that goes into gifting. And that is what my mom has kind of ingrained in me. She was very thoughtful and she still is. I'd love to see what she puts together for us, even as um, grown up and married adults and what she does for her grandkids. It's all very thoughtful and meticulous. And it's something that she loves to do to show her love. And so um, Christmas time was an abundance of love really for us. And we did not want 
And so my husband has try, had to try to understand that about me, is that my love language is gifting. <laughs> um, however, his is more along the sides of like homemade gifts because that's what his mom could afford to do. So needless to say, we've had to try to navigate this um, understanding of each other through good times and bad, through like times where we've had enough to buy the gifts that I've wanted to for our kids and for each other, and through times where we have not. We have been the recipients of Christmas charity in seasons of our lives when there was absolutely no money to um, buy extra. So we've been through it all and have had to take these like preconceived notions of what Christmas should look like in with us. So there have been challenging years. <laughs> there really has. Um, for the first few years of our marriage, when we had kids to buy for, I would say, um, my husband was just shocked at what I bought them. You know, when we got it all out Christmas Eve, and really, I was like, this isn't anything. Like, <laughs> these are just little things, but it felt like so much to him. And so he was a little upset, and then I felt terribly guilty, and you know, we've just had to wade through those waters and come to the place where we are now today, which I can't wait to share with you <laughs> what that is. But I would say through all these experiences, what Kevin and I have noticed or finally came to is that um, he doesn't enjoy Christmas. It really leaves a bad taste in his mouth. It's a season of anxiety for him, even though he's not the one with the to-do list, right? <laughs> Usually that falls into the hands of the mom or the homemaker. Um, but he still just feels anxious this time of year because of just buying all the gifts. I, it really does come down to that. And what that has led is to me feeling this like tinge of guilt every time I want to try, try to buy a gift for people. And so um, we've waded through it. We're stronger for it. <laughs> but it has caused us to take some drastic changes in the last few years. And that's what I want to talk to you about to show you how we've managed to cut back and find this really comfortable balance for both of us. Last year was huge for us. Um, I really was tired of <laughs> the awareness that my husband didn't like Christmas time very much and the pressure is kind of getting to me as well and so I could tell in my own heart just with you know all the work responsibilities that come this time of year and homemaking and gifting and, and activities I was starting to feel the same way so last year we decided to take some drastic changes I am sort of a like all or nothing personality. I really don't like that personality trait. <laughs> it's difficult for me, but um, I have a hard time finding this middle balance of things. And so I'm all or nothing, all in or not in at all. And so I had to look at, the, at Christmas time as either I'm just going to keep doing what I've always done and just buy the gifts for my kids and go all in or nothing. <laughs> so pretty drastic. And I did a video about this last year on my YouTube channel. I think it's titled like no store-bought gifts or something like that. I did a video pre-Christmas about our decision. So if you want to hear more about that, you can go ahead and go back on my YouTube channel and find that video. But what Kevin and I decided to do was to just do homemade gifts for each other. And I'm talking about immediate family right now. Um, so instead of spending, I mean, not a lot, we didn't spend a ton, but I would say like two or 300 per kid times that by four, plus your spouse, plus all the other things. Like we just decided we weren't going to do that <laughs> last Christmas. And instead we were just going to have our kids and my husband make some very simple homemade gifts for each other. We were going to do one for every member of our family. So each of us had five gifts to make. And if you're curious about what these gifts ended up being, 
post Christmas, I actually shared the video of all the things that um, the kids and I and the husband made for each other that Christmas. And I kind of wrapped up my feelings, but I'm also gonna share some of that here. But if you're curious to see what that actually looked like, definitely go back and watch those videos from last year. But let me tell you some of the things that when we um, embarked on this very drastic change for Christmas, some of the things that we um, had decided or encountered. So first of all, um, we knew that or my kids, well, at least <laughs> some of them knew that Santa would still come to deliver presents. But we felt like as a family, instead of Santa bringing all these presents, we were actually going to request that he save it for some other child. So we left a note out for Santa and told him he could maybe fill our stockings with some treats, maybe one little thing. And that would be enough for us this year that we were going to try to focus on Christ more this Christmas. <laughs> so <laughs> now some of the kids were all for that letter. Some of them maybe a little begrudgingly, but that's what we did for that situation. And Santa did fill up the stockings and brought a little thing for each kid, but it wasn't like years past. But the really fun thing was that there were a plethora of gifts under the tree, <laughs> ready for us to open on Christmas morning, all gifts that we had made for each other. And let me tell you how the kids felt about this <laughs> last year. <laughs> so we had some children, I'm not naming names here today, <laughs> that were all for it, that were just so thrilled and just, I mean, we talked about it in September doing this and they got right away to work built or making and creating homemade gifts for each other. And that was really fun and heartwarming to see. However, some children really struggled with it. <laughs> and I'll admit I did too. I really had to rein myself in and um, resist those purchasing um, urges <laughs> every time something cool came up. So we all just had to kind of face these feelings of wanting gifts, wanting to buy things, wanting to receive things. We all kind of had to go into this maybe uncomfortable place in our hearts and address um, the real reason we were doing this. And so as kids struggled with that, we really would just try to tell them why we were doing this and help them see perhaps the blessings that could be um, still in them on Christmas morning, even though they weren't surrounded by store-bought gifts. Now, let me talk to you about a little bit about how that Christmas morning looked. Um, there weren't a whole bunch of gifts, of course, from Santa to wrap. He definitely respected our wishes there. And I saw the biggest change in my husband. Truly, I have never seen him <laughs> so joyful on Christmas to see what our kids made for each other and to receive what they gave and worked hard on, uh, on for us and then to also give them things that took more effort and more time and more thought and that we, that we made with our own hands. Um, even though they weren't grand and huge, um, some, some of them were like a batch of cookies. My little guy wanted to make my husband some eggnog, so I helped him with that the night before Christmas. Like some of them were little. Um, of course, I told you I'm an all or nothing. So I made four quilts all for my children, <laughs> which was quite the feat. Um, but that Christmas morning was so beautiful for me as a mother and especially for my husband. I just had never witnessed so much Christmas joy in him. And it did my heart so good because I realized that the burden of the finances wasn't there that morning and he didn't have to try to figure out how he was going to bounce back from the Christmas spending. And I just saw pure joy and it just brought tears to my eyes. Um, I better not think about it too much or I'll start that again. <laughs> but it was, it was beautiful. And I really do feel like the kids enjoyed it as well. Although some of them, Maybe we're a little underwhelmed <laughs> by what happened that morning. I, I feel like the joy was tangible and memorable. I mean, talk about a Christmas that they'll never forget <laughs> because it was so different from what they'd experienced before. And that's really 
what Kevin and I wanted. We wanted them to have one of those Christmases to tell their children about and to remember. And I feel like that was such a blessing about that. But now let's talk about how after that experience, where we're going now. What are we doing this year? Are we doing the homemade gifts for everyone again or not? <laughs> so um, again, like October rolled around and we sat down with our kids and started to talk about, you know, do we want to do a handmade Christmas again? And what I got was some children excited and enthusiastic. My husband definitely all for it. Um, but some children not thrilled about it. And I'll admit myself, I was a bit like, ugh. And here's why I think um, there was some hesitation to do this again. I have also some children who are all or nothing children. <laughs> and so when we are invited to make a gift for someone, we go all in and think over and above what it should or really needs to be. And we put these expectations and these idealistic situations in our mind, and then they become impossible to reach, and then we're discouraged. <laughs> so this is what happened, uh, mainly for one of my daughters and myself. We just bit off more than we can chew. Now, ideally, you would start in January for the next year's homemade gifts, but that's not how it is, right? You wait till the last minute. <laughs> so... I think a, a few of us thought, actually, that Christmas was great, but it was also kind of stressful. And I don't know if I want to do that again. So that's where some of us went. <laughs> but we knew, like we knew, I think all of us, in spite of, you know, the natural man here, all of us knew we didn't want to go back to this Christmas of abundance, I guess, in materialistic things. So... We have found a middle ground we're gonna try this year. And maybe it's something you want to try as well, if it's not too late. <laughs> but we decided instead of making homemade gifts for everyone, siblings doing it for each other and for the parents, and then for us doing it for our spouse and our children, instead of doing that, we picked names. So we put all six of us, our names in a bowl and picked one. And that is the one person we were going to give a homemade gift to. Not purchased, it's something that they make. If they want to do it for the other people in the family, they can, but there's no expectation or requirement. Um, and it's not needed if they don't want to. And then I told the kids that we would probably buy them a few things. Okay, so this has been hard for me and my husband's like, you can't do it, but I'm, I'm holding out, you guys. I'm doing really good. <laughs> I heard this idea once, I'm sure you've come across it, but a lot of people ask for, from Santa is to get them one thing they want, one thing they need, one thing they wear, and one thing they read. So I've, I've kind of let that be my guiding star. I think that's a really great idea to kind of... <laughs> you know, control yourself and keep it focused. And it just is not too much. So I heard that a long time ago and I've tried to stick with it before, um, but I think I'm going to this year. <laughs> so <laughs> this is good accountability for me here. But I just really wanna keep the purchase items at a minimum um, and just, you know, a little, a little stocking with some treats and those little, little things that will just keep me focused and keep us spending very little. So that is what we're gonna try this year to, to cut back on Christmas. We wanna cut back on the stress and we wanna stay cut back on the purchasing. And again, I would love to hear how you are doing it. But when we thought about this, my husband and I really thought like, what do we want Christmas to look like when our kids are grown and gone. So my youngest is almost 10, which I can't believe. And so we're, we're, we're past some traditions, we're past some beliefs now, and we really need to reshape how we're thinking about Christmas. And I know some married couples where even though they're married and gone, their parents still give them huge gifts and they spend a lot of money on their kids when they're out of the house. And my husband and I just really thought, we just don't feel like in the long term, that's what we want to be doing. Not that we don't love our children, but we just don't want so much focus to be, be on, you know, materialistic things. So this method of just picking names for one 
member of the family and making a handmade item out of that. I mean, we're, we're handmade family. We love to create. So this is also a very fulfilling thing for us. But if we just do one, if we just pick names and choose one every year, hopefully it won't be as overwhelming. And then um, I really think that could be a tradition that maybe we, we can keep up even as the kids grow up and are gone. But if you have some experience with this, especially some of you who have, <laughs> have sent kids off and maybe have an empty nest or grandkids, I would love your perspective on what has worked there. It might change how I'm doing things um, next year by hearing your input, but that's kind of, we're trying to envision the long term, and we feel like this, this maybe is a good place to be. I still get to buy some things. I still get to think about what that person might want or need or what they'd like to wear or read, and that's really fun for me, and it helps me um, also give some of that love language that I have in me and um, allow them to receive that. So there's still some of that, but it's but it's reined in. So I'm really hopeful that this might be the sweet spot this year. Now, if some of you are thinking, like if you presented these ideas to your kids, if they're used to a Christmas of abundance and material possessions, you might be thinking like this is gonna go over terribly. <laughs> We're gonna have anarchy on our hands. I have some ideas of, of what I've done to kind of soften the blow because sometimes for kids, you know, Christmas morning can be magical with all the presents to unwrap. Um, so to, to just tell them that you're going to take that away or really decrease it, it's, it's a hard pill to swallow. And it doesn't mean they're a bad person. It's just, you know, it can be hard to face when you just have such fond memories of what Christmas means to you. So here's some ideas to maybe soften the blow a little bit. What I've done is I've told my family that we're doing way less for Christmas and birthdays are going to be a bigger deal. Now birthdays usually haven't been that big of a deal, maybe two or three gifts, um, but instead I want to kind of reverse that. Since birthdays are a little more spread out than Christmas time, even though we have one and two in December and one in January, <laughs> now you can get the financial burden that my husband <laughs> feels that time of year, but um, we can spread it out a little bit and make birthdays a much bigger deal and to really just help them feel like they're so you know loved and important and make that birthday that that time of year where maybe they get to just really enjoy presents and gifts and things that they really want or need so that's how we've softened the blow a little bit and it also softens the financial burden of christmas time instead of buying all the gifts for six people in the family. <laughs> it's just very little. And then their birthdays, we just get to focus on the one. Also, we've talked a lot about, and you know, this is still hard for kids to kind of wrap their heads around, but instead of spending so much money on ourselves, who could we spend it on? Who could we really show some love at Christmas time? So we've done like 12 days countdowns for families where you drop a gift off on their porch <laughs> for the 12 days leading up to Christmas. That has been really meaningful and fun and memorable for our kids. Um, this year, I've heard about the foster care. They're, they're wanting connection kits like movie baskets or game baskets. And so we thought we would compile a bunch of those. One of my daughters loves to go to the Giving Tree at Olive Garden and get one of the names and the requests and buy those things for those kids. So there are ways to just help your kids think outside of themselves and to soften, you know, the blow that maybe they're not getting so much. I think it's I think it's a valuable lesson. Something else you might be wondering, now what about like bigger gifts, you know, that <laughs> that maybe your kids want or even need, like maybe electronics, a phone, maybe they need like musical instruments, sewing machines, like maybe they're those like really big items that is what you usually give out for Christmas that make it so special for those kids um, because it's something that they maybe don't get the rest of the year. So instead of Christmas, or instead of using Christmas for those kinds of big things, we've decided that maybe those are the things they get for their birthdays, um, like the musical instruments that they want, or we don't do electronics. We've decided if our kids want electronics, like phones or anything like that, they need to save up and buy, the, buy them themselves. 
So those are the ways that we're, we're approaching or addressing those bigger items that your kids maybe can't afford. We teach them the value of saving up and working hard for that bigger thing. Um, we also get funding for our homeschool through a um, charter school program. And a lot of times they'll cover things like sewing machines or computers that they would need for their schooling. So instead of using those as gifts, we're using that funding to help buy those things. So I just don't want Christmas to be that time where you're just swimming in really elaborate, expensive gifts. So that's how we've kind of handled that. If that's something you've thought about as maybe being difficult, if that's what you're accustomed to giving at Christmas time. Now let's talk for a minute about like gifting to your spouse. Um, the husband and I, because I know of his stress towards this year, we have just decided that Christmas is mostly for our kids and that seeing them feel joyful is um, more important to us than spoiling each other at this time of year. So I've kind of let him off the hook. <laughs> Gifting is still a love language for me, but I don't want it to be done when he's stressed and worried. So I've kind of just let him off the hook. We may like fill each other's stockings and, you know, get him socks or a nice shirt that time of year. Um, but we just don't, we just don't really go to much into each other's gifts this time of year. I've kind of released that pressure, but I keep the pressure on for my birthday. <laughs> so he knows that is a time, honey, that you can you can spoil me a little bit, you know, and <laughs> take me out, let's do something real special. <laughs> so anyway, that's how we've approached that and have cut back on what we give each other there and just poured our energy more into our kids. Now let's talk about gifting outside of your immediate family if you wanna cut back there. Now, as far as like neighbor gifts, friend gifts, even like sibling gifts. Um, we always do the smallest little homemade thing that usually we're like making in bulk <laughs> together as a family. This year I'm doing mint extract. You guys maybe saw my YouTube video where I was making all those extracts. Um, one year or a few years we did a pancake mix. Really easy to just bag up and package all cute. So we try to keep those things a simple homemade gift just a little thing that says, we love you, Merry Christmas, we're thinking about you, and we call it good. I often encourage my kids to do the same. If they wanna give their best friends something, I give them ideas for a homemade gift, like a homemade ornament. Um, one year we did bath bombs. I have a recipe for that on my blog as well. Just something really simple, affordable, and just maybe takes a little more effort, but is more meaningful that way. Um, we do still buy small gifts for our parents, like Kevin and I's parents um, and aunt, but beyond that, that's really all we do. And I imagine maybe I could even cut back and rein in a little bit there, but I feel, I feel pretty comfortable about those things. All right, let's really quickly talk about cutting back on traditions. And I am like a tradition girl. I love traditions. A lot of times when when like my extended family or my family wants to stop doing a tradition, I just, I feel a bit like Yotevi and I just wanna scream, tradition! <laughs> you know, so it just, it means so much to me. But I have come to peace with that, that there are stages of our lives where these traditions work. And then as we move into other stages of our lives, it's okay to let them go knowing that new ones can still come and go. So um, think about like what stage you're in now. Maybe you have a full house, maybe you have an empty nest, maybe your kids are getting older. We're kind of at this transition stage. Almost all the kids are in the double digits, so things are looking a little bit different. And it's caused us to really evaluate the traditions that we're doing. So I wanna share some traditions that I have tried to let go actually and cut back on just to find out that they are so meaningful to me that I don't want to yet. <laughs> so I tried, I thought Christmas cards, you know, where you put your photo on a cute card and send it out to people. When I wanted a cut back at Christmas years ago, I thought, you know what, I can let that one go. And when I let it go, I was so sad about it because I love receiving those Christmas cards from people, from family that is all over the world, from friends that, you know, old college roommates, like getting those cards is one of the most enjoyable things for me at Christmas time. 
hands down. And so when I stopped sending them out, it made me sad. And so that is one thing I've brought back into my life and actually tried to make it more meaningful. If you saw the handmade cards that I made last year, they were so fun to make with my kids. Um, and then we just included a little family picture in there. So that is one thing that I don't want to let go. I don't want to cut back on. And that's what you can evaluate. Maybe you try to let something go and then you'll, you'll be able to understand how important or not important that that tradition is for you. Now with my youngest, almost 10, um, we have always wrapped up uh, uh, like a picture book and for a countdown of sorts, we open one up every night in December. And I started to think, I'm like, I've got a 17 year old <laughs> and maybe this is one of those traditions we can let go. And when I, when I mentioned it to the family, I had the oldest ones saying, yeah, we probably don't need to do that. And the youngest ones about, you know, flipping a lid. <laughs> so that showed me like, why should these younger ones miss out on seven more years of enjoying this tradition just because their older siblings are maybe too old or too cool for it. And honestly, they love it. <laughs> Even if it's a, a cheesy picture book, they still love that little family connection time. And so I'm going to hold on to that one still. But even as your kids get older, it can look different. Maybe you pick up, you know, a chapter book or longer Christmas stories and read them together at night. So you can do that thing and just think about it differently. Maybe you don't wrap a book every night, but you just sit down to read a Christmas story every night. That could still take the tradition and the purpose behind it and you could still enjoy it. Now, last year, um, we got a department store tree because I really wanted to try a bigger fuller tree and I ended up hating it <laughs> because one of our favorite traditions is going to the mountains and cutting down our tree. I cannot wait to show you guys the tree we found this year. It's my favorite one yet, it is so beautiful. But that last year when we tried to like not do that one, what ended up happening is we went to the mountains anyway <laughs> and got another tree because that department tree department store tree got so dry so fast. And so I was really worried about it. So we took it down <laughs> and replaced it. So again, that's me trying to say like, do we need to do these traditions? And then finding out how really important they are. Now I want to tell you some of the traditions that I've successfully let go and I'm at total peace with. Um, we used to have Christmas morning breakfast at my mom's house and she only lives like 10 minutes away from me. But that was actually becoming quite a burden for her as she's aging. And honestly, it's kind of stressful to like have your own family moment, opening presents, and then packing up to go to mom's and then cooking a breakfast. It was just a little more stress than it needed to be. So we just get together that night, have some appetizers and some board games and enjoy um, extended family in the evening and on Christmas Eve. So that's plenty of time. So we successfully let go of Christmas breakfast. And now Kevin and I get to, to do our own tradition at home with that. I used to have um, like groups of girlfriends or Kevin and I had couple friends where we'd try to like go to eat out or do little family parties together. And um, we've, just, we've just slowly been letting those go. And I've just determined that maybe the month of December isn't the month of the year that we need to throw all that socialization in. <laughs> There's already plenty. And so rather than that, we try to do like cookouts in the summer or maybe like in January when you're feeling a little <laughs> sluggish, maybe that's a good time to get together with friends. So letting go of those traditions was really helpful for me. We used to let our kids have a big Christmas party with their friends and we'd plan it and we'd go all out. That just became one of those things that was just too much. So we cut that out, let it go. The kids can do birthday parties. <laughs> um, one other thing that you'll find this time of year is there's so many adorable countdown ideas on Pinterest, on Instagram, wherever you're scrolling. Countdowns can be so cute and so fun. And without even realizing it, I had adopted like several countdowns and made several countdowns and you know, in the last few years, I've just determined I don't need that. We we need one countdown because it's absolute insanity to do several of them um, every night. So <laughs> really cutting down, finding the one that's most meaningful has been helpful for me. And finally, let's talk about cutting down on Christmas expectations that you have of yourself or maybe others have of you. 
Um, these can be quite burdensome and it feels really good to let them go when you give yourself permission. Um, I have to laugh. I when the elf on the shelf trend popped up and so many well, so many people were picking it up and they did the funniest cutest things to hide that little elf I knew right away that was not an expectation I ever wanted of myself. I would fail miserably. I would forget <laughs> to move the elf. And so I absolutely never picked up that um, expectation or that cultural tradition that the world was trying to shove in my face. I just refused and I am so glad I did because that would have been an expectation of myself that would have made this time of year very um, frustrating. So if you if you love that, your family loves that, I am not mocking you. I just know myself, I would forget and then I'd feel guilty. And so, you know, I can let go of that, that <laughs> expectation. You might also just think of like any unnecessary pressure that society has put on you that you might expect of yourself. Maybe things like getting your girlfriend's gifts um, or even like your siblings getting them big gifts instead just say, I'm sorry, we're not going to do that anymore, but I'd love to hang out with you in January, or maybe we can get together before Thanksgiving. Um, just letting go of that, that pressure to do those social norm things. So if you feel pressured, like in your decor, like maybe you need matching gift wrap, you can let that expectation go. It's just fine. <laughs> Maybe you see online people decorating multiple rooms, which is kind of what I do, but it's it's pretty pared down. But a lot of people can go all out and decorate a lot of rooms. You can let go of that expectation. And if you just put up a tree and that's all you manage that year, that is just fine. I used to feel like I needed to spend a day making Christmas candy with my kids. Let that one go. Now my husband does it and he enjoys it. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Um, one year I started this Christmas curriculum in the month of December. Since we homeschool, I found a really awesome Christmas curriculum. It was wonderful. And then I told myself, this is something we have to do every year. And then the next year rolled around and I knew it was just going to be too much. So I just let that go. If gingerbread houses stresses you out, let it go. See if, if um, a grandparent will pick it up. That's what happened with me growing up. My grandma always did the painting pumpkins, the gingerbread houses. She had the bandwidth for it, but for me as a mother, I do not. Um, but somehow my kids always have a party or so where they get to experience these things. So it's just fine. I can let those things go. Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Small Business Saturday, all these huge shopping days. Don't give in to the pressure. If that is really overwhelming for you, and you always end up spending more money than you wanted to. Let those days go and rather enjoy the fact that you're not on the internet or you're not out there shopping when everyone else is and that you get to enjoy some nice quiet days after Thanksgiving at home. So I've loved letting those, those things go. If it is expected of you to host parties, and that is really overwhelming for you, you can let that go. And what I've found is if you just tell people, no, I can't host this party this year, someone else will do it. <laughs> so, so you don't have to put that pressure on yourself. A lot of times I think about these, these expectations or these traditions that maybe stress me out. And I have to think, you know, what is it that my family and loved ones really want from me? Do they want me to make an elaborate party or to go all out in one area. And honestly, I feel like what they would appreciate more is a happy mother and a happy homemaker who is just truly enjoying this time of year and they can feel that energy. And there's so many things that you can do to express that love for the season without putting on these unnecessary expectations. Um, that you might have of yourself or that you might have let others um, give you. Anyway, I didn't think I could talk about this very long, but it turns out I have. <laughs> Thank you for joining me and sticking with me. I really hope you've just, you've just been able to see maybe a little window into your own heart so that you can evaluate how you really want this time of year to fill and to help you think about maybe 
areas where you can cut back and areas that really mean a lot to you that you want to hold on to. So I hope it's just left you a lot of food for thought. I know we all don't do things the same this time of year and it can look different for many of us and that's why I would love to hear from you in the comments and to communicate more with you here and get ideas from you. Thank you so much for joining me. I do believe I have one more podcast for you this month of December. I have a little Christmas story for you from um, a Christmas past of mine where I learned a very important lesson as a homemaker and I want to share that story with you. So stay tuned and make sure you're subscribed and I will be back very soon to share more inspiration for the keeper of the home.